First of all, I'm 26. That's right. You really do look <laughs> like it, though. Even though one last time I'm saying at the age 28, I, I aged backwards. No, I know. When I saw your Wikipedia, I did not realize. I see 63. He looks amazing. <laughs> I'm 70 years old. Look at my face. God I'm dang it. I'm five years old. Now, broadcasting live from the podcast palace on Park Street in beautiful and dangerous Clearwater, Florida, it's the Comedians on Cork podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Tony God and Pat Largo. Hey guys, welcome to another Comedians Uncorked uh, podcast. My name is Pat Largo, and before we continue with our great guest today, Dad Fan, a beautiful, huge uh, shout out and thank you to Julie Drollshagen of Century 21 right here in beautiful Clearwater, Florida. Uh, of course, the real estate business, uh, much like I'm sure where, where Dad is in LA, the real estate business here in the Tampa Bay area is absolutely still hot as can be. Give her a shout at 727-902-9233 or get her at uh, floridabeachbusiness.com. Julie Drolls Hagen with Century 21. Thank you so much. Um, our guest today, we've been on a roll, man. If you've been seeing some of our podcasts, especially in season two, we've been on a roll with some great guests here. And uh, this this gentleman, I would say, uh, uh, is on top of the list right here. Uh, you've seen him uh, perform over 20 years now doing stand-up comedy, acting, uh, 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 America, or uh, uh, what do you call it? A uh, uh, last comic standing. He was here recently in our Tampa Bay area at Snappers, the one and only Dat fan. Thank you so much, Dat. Thank you for having me. I, I'm glad you're, you're so Asian. You got the whole real estate thing taken care of. You, you got, got sponsors, <laughs> you got Dat fan, almost said America's Got Talent, which I'll take that credit. That's great credit. <laughs> we got so many people on that damn show and I'm trying to squeak out uh, last comic standing for God's sake. Um, but yeah, and I like to start out this way because it's, it's been a couple of weird two, I mean, it's still going on, but especially the last two, two and a half years with the pandemic and everything else going on uh, in the world and maybe in, in your life, what's been going on with you, your family, how's it affected your career uh, COVID? How's everything been going with, with, with that fan? It's been crazy. I, I got married at the beginning of uh, the pandemic and nice. we're, we're still married. Amazingly. Uh, my wife, Katie, she's great. And, <laughs> you know, we, we stopped the, uh, the pandemic just in time for whatever's going on in Europe right now. That's fantastic. It's one, it's one after the other, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm being sarcastic, by the way, I think it's right. a terrible thing that's happening over overseas, as you know. Uh, I, I heard something's going. I'm not even sure. I just, I'm just, uh, I'm in a bubble. Is there another war going on? <laughs> you don't know. I, yeah, I've heard something. But <laughs> all I know is, I mean, serious. I am not ordering any more Russian escorts here in Tampa. They are off the list. Yeah, it's 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 a weird time. I mean, it's very strange. We had that very strange two year pandemic, which we're at the tail end of right now. And then right. now there's the whole unfortunate thing with Ukraine, and uh, we just, I hope you know, we all hope that all this stuff will stop us, you know, just let us get back to it. Whatever kind of normalcy, I know it's subjective, but whatever kind of normalcy, the world, I want to see the world at one time, just kind of be okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's possible. I guess the best part about the uh, pandemic and now uh, Russian and Ukraine, I'm not hearing anything about ISIS. That's the only good thing I could take from this. Right. 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 That's all I got. Yeah, I'm sorry um, to be such a serious beginning of the podcast. <laughs> it's supposed to be well, podcast. It's only going to get darker. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I lost my mom. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, listen. Oh, man. We're really going, we're really love, going to a dark hole now. <laughs> congrats about, about you and Kenny getting married. I love how you said we got married like right with the beginning of, of the pandemic, and it's, it's still going strong. How do you keep the spark after two years? How do you do it? Uh, we're just trying to start it. Okay. I mean, no, my wife was listening. No, it's just ah. been very weird because I mean, I, I love her very much. We love each other very much, but we've been locked up here in California. You know, we have different laws over here, so we're locked up here for quite a while. Yeah, in quarantine and lockdown, and we're we're happy to spin out of it at this point. We're trying to be optimistic. Um, we're trying to keep our fingers crossed. There's a lot of great news on the way. Uh, for example, when we are done with this this podcast, I have to go try to memorize episode one of a pilot that I have coming out. And uh, it's called Early Risers. I, I guess I can say it because it's on the breakdowns out here. Yep. So I am promoted to one, I, one of the leads of the show. Uh, I read. I originally read for one character, and I guess I'm another character. I guess that's the details I can't share too much about. So that that's great news. A, a TV pilot that's going to be filming, and then possibly season one in the works, and then 
speaking of real estate, we're just kind of crossing our fingers on some things. I don't want to jinx it. So it's yeah. it has something to do with real estate. So hopefully that'll work out as well. So now is uh, now is this? I, I think you're working on multiple things, if I'm not mistaken, right? But is this yes. anything at, uh, out of the country or in our country or? Uh, the series I'll be filming in Vietnam. Wow. And then the, uh, I also produce Zoom shows when I'm not on TV or film. I also have a movie called Shattered that's out that filmed in Montana. So that's, that's out now on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And then the Zoom shows I do weekly. And then I also, you know, do acting stuff on the side. And I mean, it's, it's just a bunch of, uh, and tour. Like as I met you out in Tampa, Florida, mm -hmm. or as a Palm Harbor forgive me. And then also uh, Fort Myers, Florida. I was there before that. So just kind of, just kind of touring around and filming and doing all sorts of stuff. And I was going to ask you about that because I, I looked up your IM uh, uh, DB and I was, uh, we talked briefly about it. And uh, in fact, I'm probably going to be seeing it in the next day or two with, with my girlfriend, uh, Shattered, great cast along with Mr. John Malkovic. Now, did you get to meet him? What, 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 what was the, 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 the scenario leading up to you getting into that movie? Like, how did that come about? Yeah, uh, the director, I worked with Luis on Startup, a TV show that's on Netflix as well. And then mm -hmm. that was many years ago. And then he kept me in mind and he gave me a shot on, uh, on, on Shattered. However, I actually had to audition for that because there's producers involved and investors and all that stuff. So I had to show that I could deliver. Right. And uh, luckily it worked out. And I'm on that film too. And it's me and a bunch of white people in Montana, which is fantastic. It's how out of place in Montana. All did you would you did you fear for your life at any given moment? No, I love white people. I I my dream is I mean I love Asians too and everybody else. I love African Americans and Hispanic sure. people. But my I my dream I guess I, I grew up so white is to work with you know like a Diane Keaton type project out in the middle of nowhere in America. I think that's quite fun. I know it sounds very weird what I'm saying, but uh, I love it. I love no, it. I think stuff. it's very artsy, but I'm, I mean, I am 100% Caucasian and I'm afraid to be in Montana. <laughs> I mean, for se several <laughs> reasons, I'm just scared, but I mean, uh, but that's awesome though. Now, something like that with your part, how long of a shoot out there? Was it just Montana or, or multiple locales? Um, it's, it's Montana. It's, uh, different parts of montana we, we filmed one part in big sky montana i don't yeah, know have yeah. you been to montana before no but i do i really do want to go though i do well it's really nice big sky montana and also uh the other one i don't even know why i want to say beaumont and that's not Bo. Oh. i think it's Bo montana okay e-a-u e it's one of those white cities but montana because yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> i know it is a beaumont texas you're right there used to be a big sky comedy uh festival Oh, I, yeah, I didn't know that. Hopefully, do you know that if it's still happening? I, I don't. A buddy of mine, Chris Cope, won a few years ago, and I wasn't familiar with it, but it was a big thing. But I don't know because of either the pandemic or maybe right before that, maybe monetarily. I don't know if it's still in, in process, but a lot of it, it was a great, for a long time, a great comedy festival, Big Sky. Yeah. Here's um, a funny tidbit of information. Montana was my 48th state in America that I've been to. Oh, really? Yeah. So before that was 47. And then like, the two that's missing is North Dakota and South Dakota. So once I hit those two, I've hit all 50 states across America. Right on. And, and, and off the top of your head, like I was just in Alaska a, a few months ago in December, which is never a good time oh, to nice. go to Alaska. Was it, how did Alaska treat you? I was, see, you went there in the winter. I went there during the summer. Beautiful. Uh, during the filming of Last Comic Standing season three, and they made an offer for me to do uh, University of Anchorage. And I wasn't, a, you know, Obviously, I knew about this, but I wasn't aware that 10, 1030 at night, the sun is out. <laughs> yes. So I'm like, I'm leaving a mall. You know, I don't know if it was before or after the show or whatever it was. Like, the show was at the university, but as I left the mall to get something, it, the sun is just circling around. It was so crazy. It's, it, I'm telling you, it blew me away. And it was the opposite. We're waking up. I'm thinking at 6 o'clock in the morning. I look at the watch, it's 9.30. It doesn't, the sun arise isn't until about 9.45. I'm <laughs> driving around. And anytime during the day, it either looks like sunset or sunrise. It could be two in the afternoon, but you're like, are we supposed to go to bed soon? It was so freaky to my eyes. I just kept drinking the all two weeks I was there. I said, the more drunk I am, <laughs> I don't give a damn what time it is. Um, <laughs> Wait, I, give me one second. Let me reset the camera. Just give me one second. Sure, sure. 
My uh, my wife is in the other room in an acting class, and uh, okay, it just, it just makes my editing way easier later on when I have smaller chunks as opposed to. Oh yeah, but one one massive block, sure. Um, and 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 your acting and and comedy is is fascinating, but I I want to get into a, a kind of a meaty subject. Uh, your social media use. Uh, I know we had we had a brief conversation here a while ago when you were at Snappers here in Palm Harbor, Florida, but I mean, um your your thought process and your use of social media is very intriguing especially for a gentleman who you know is not 25 years old i mean you yeah. what, what you're on TikTok now you cover first all the major all, ones but tell tell us about this first of all i'm 26. that's right you really do look <laughs> like it though even though one last time i was saying at the age 28 I, I aged backwards no i know when i saw your wikipedia i did not realize i see 63 he looks amazing. <laughs> i'm 70 years old look at my face god I'm dang it five years old but <laughs> so, first of all, uh, sorry to put you on the spot, yeah, my friend. But did you start a TikTok yet? Yes, I'm very close. Uh, we're <laughs> starting it tonight or tomorrow because I, my other uh, uh, co uh, host here separated his shoulder a few days ago, he's oh, under no. severe drugs, so I can't rely on him. So either me and the girlfriend or someone's going to help me with my TikTok thing, and then we're going to hook it up once I get that going. All you got to do is sign up, you don't have to dang it, okay, you don't, you don't need a good shoulder. I like how you answered that like a politician. You're like, yes, I'm starting it tonight. I figured the moat, right, exactly. I should add a thank you in there. Just thank you and that thanks for your vote. Because I know I try to give the, the big, the robust story so people won't pressure me on it. But God bless you, you just keep bulldogging me. I'm gonna get it done, I swear. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's for you. I mean, I know, I, you're right. Listen, my buddy Larry Venturino tried to tell me, his fellow comedian, he tried to tell me to start TikTok two years ago, which I did. Yeah. And then I, I, find, I didn't post anything. I was too busy making fun of TikTok. Yeah, I didn't post anything at all. I mean, I could even just post me making fun of TikTok, but I didn't do it. And I deeply regret it because, you know, comedy day today during the cyber age, the all the social media and all that stuff, it's very competitive. And yeah. I've missed out on probably, I don't know, 100,000 followers because I mm. decided to do nothing. I mean, I just sat here during the pandemic. I could have posted a TikTok and I failed to do it. And then and here we are at 2000 followers. Right. But but you see, though, and I see, and, and thank you for pushing me because when you told me uh, Larry Venturino has 75,000 and that guy's like close to 50 years old. Larry's younger than me. Is he really? Larry, yeah. if you listen to this, I, I'm not saying you're not young. I just thought that maybe a little older, but still very nice. You look great. <laughs> you look great. I'll Viral. Say, I'm, 47. I'm 47. Larry's a few years younger than me, or he's probably quite a bit younger than me. Okay. 75, 76,000 followers on TikTok. And, and the reason why I'm, I'm drilling so hard on this TikTok thing is this. Um, I mean, the, the tough part is there are minors on there. There's like 15 year olds on TikTok, which I don't even know how this works. Right. But, right. you know, they're the future consumers. Yeah. So the people that are not signed up on TikTok and the depend depending only on Facebook and Instagram, the, the people get older on Instagram and Facebook and you're going to want these followers down the road, 10 years down the road, these 15 year olds are going to be 25 year olds okay. and they're the main consumers of America. Hmm. Well, I know you're right. I just see, I know because I'm going to be 62 in 10 years and I hope that at 25, they still appreciate my well-crafted dick jokes. <laughs> well, i say this. You know, I, I try to be respectful to senior citizens. I try to be respect. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about <laughs> you're, 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 I'm talking about, talking like, about people that are Venturino's age. I'm talking. Yeah, I don't know why you think he's so old. But know. like uh, people that are, you know, seventy and all that. I, I try to respect my elders and all that stuff. But at the same time, Facebook's full of senior citizens, and yeah. you can't depend on only them when you're trying to advertise what do you have a show at 10, 10 30 at night by the time you right. hit the stage it's 11 30 you're hoping somebody that's 70 is going to show up and be up that late they're most likely want to go to bed earlier yeah so you know if, i love facebook I've, I've enjoyed facebook for a long time but it's also a lot of just older people complaining about that i'm guilty of that sometimes yeah. so uh yeah you know it's true and i find myself getting off it more on and only doing show promotions and just the light and fluffy stuff like I used to do years ago. And right. anything uh, COVID, war related, this related, I, I'm just, I try to avoid that type of nonsense right now. I, I just, I, I, in a perfect world, I, I would not want to be on social media. I want to go old school with whatever old school is. If it's, if it's websites, if it's radio and TV, but you said it first, or you said it best, that nowadays, if you are not somewhere 
on at least one or two platforms, you're pretty much not non-existent, I think. I mean, I, and I'll be honest with you and, and me agreeing with you that if I was a billionaire, which I'm not by far, if I was a billionaire, I probably wouldn't really be on social media. I, and I would probably, if I was, I would probably post photos of the sunset or something like that. Right. You know, I'm, I'm a little tired. I know it sounds weird for me saying this during the interview about me and you. I'm, I get kind of tired of talking about myself, to be honest with you. But, you know, in, in this business, you do need to sell what you do. I don't know what happened. I think once I reached my 40s, I kind of went, why am I plugging myself? <laughs> yeah. I know who I am. But, but in this business, you do have fans. And seeing you in general as far as comedians, mm -hmm. you got to reach your fans. Your fans yeah. appreciate your work. And if you stop talking to them, then they'll stop talking to you. And then what are we? And I love stand up. I love doing comedy, but I do need fans to show. Case in point, mm -hmm. a buddy of mine, Kabir Singh, mm -hmm. he is on America's Got Talent. Have you heard of him before? Kabir Singh. I have actually. Yeah. Very funny. Very funny guy. Great guy. Very generous. Gracious gentleman. I love Kabir. He's great. Very down to earth. And he got on America's Got Talent. He used to open for me. He got on America's Got Talent. He got pretty far. And he's on social media all the time. And he's taking the headlining gigs, some of them that I would have taken. And I'm happy for him, honestly. I'm happy for him because right. everyone deserves a shot. And I love Kabir, but it goes back to social media. He goes and tells everybody he's going to be at this venue, and he takes it and sells it out. And good for him. You know? Of course. Of course. I, I, I can't complain about other comedians, uh, especially the ones I love, if I'm not on social media trying myself, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, it, it, it does. You're right. I just, I just, God, I just get tired. I forget to, to do things and I, and I need to be reminded. Like I just, you know, I mean, you're very busy. I'm, I'm, I'm busy, but I just forget. Oh, don't forget to post Facebook. Oh, don't forget Instagram. Right. Now I have to do TikTok. I'm like, Holy crap. I just, yeah. at the end of the day, I get so drained. I'm like, did right. I forget? An account? Oh, I forgot to post it something else somewhere else. And you know, it's, you don't have to, you don't yeah. have to post. And, and you know, I have buddies that I went to high school with. They're obviously around the same age as me. Yeah. And they don't post hardly at all. And I see them once every two years. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, just for the sake of your buddies, like I miss them. Right. That, I like yeah. how their life is. And, you know, they're down in San Diego. So it's hard to drive down there during the pandemic, uh, especially when we're deep in it, you know? Exactly. So, I know. Yeah. And I, I'm rooting for you guys to get out of it. I hope things are opening up. That's why I wish you guys could have done more shows out here during the pandemic because our governor is like a pro wrestler. He's like, just do it. Come on out. Clubs are open. <laughs> He's, a, he's got the championship belt. They're like, what about the cruise ships yeah. over? They're like, no, you don't need shots. Get the hell on there. Either you live or die. Go enjoy yourself. You know, like the, ask him a question. Can we drink and drive? Go ahead and drink and drive. I don't give a shit. No one cares. There were great things about Florida when I was there because I started looking around me and nobody's wearing a mask. So then I stopped wearing a mask. Yeah. Uh, luckily, when I got back, my wife tested me. No Omicron, nothing. Thank yeah. goodness. But the thing is, is California is starting to open up now, like how Florida right. is. Right. And there's some people that have masks, some, some don't. And uh, it's hard to, you know, m the mentality of a group. When I saw a lot of people who weren't wearing a mask, I wanted to join them, which I did. Right. And then here, when I see people being careful, I want to be careful too. So uh, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, of course. I'm with you. I I'm just trying to be considerate of the people around me. And I'm glad that California is opening back up and all that stuff. So. And we're happy about that as well, my friend. Um, real quick, we talked about it before. Your comedy, you've been doing this for over 20 years, acting now. What is there one that, that satisfies your palate more than the other right now? Is there one, is, or is it just whatever is the hot iron at the time? But which one? Is there any one that you lean towards more now? You know, the weirdest thing is, even though I'm on TV and film, and I'm, I'm appreciative of all that stuff, and I tour, I'm one of the very few lucky people that's still doing that, even at a different caliber as other comedians. But still, I'm, I'm very grateful for all that. But the weird thing is, cre creative-wise, uh -huh. I take all that money and I save it up. And besides contributing towards the marriage of me and my wife um, and my company, I really enjoy I'm, – I'm building a basically a TV studio somewhere where I could have my own stuff that I put yeah. out. And that's what I'm the most excited about. <laughs> Isn't that I, I think I think I'm the only one of the only somewhat celebrities that is more excited about a home studio than being on TV and film. I know that sounds very strange. No, because it's yours. Yes. 
it's, it's uh, my content. You know, possession is nine tenths of the law. Yeah. If you possessing that studio, that's yours. You can do what you want, and that is so beautiful. And to have that kind of financial freedom to yeah. do that. Yep. I mean, I love it. I'm doing this out of my bedroom in an 850 square foot home that was built in 1974 with a Zoom camera thing and a. I got one of these uh, ring things. It's not even on because the thing shorted out. This is just natural Florida sunshine on my face, Dad. That's how shiny that state is. It, look, look how happy I am. It's it's <laughs> it's blinding me. You're such a, a, a sunshine it's, state that it's beaming through the Zoom right now. Jesus Christ! I got SPF of 100 on my forehead right now, and I'm indoors. It's not good. You'd be my age. You get skin cancer. And you're just just looking at things. You get you're getting cancer. sunburned in your bedroom in the dark. It's not good. Well, no, I like the studio thing. Good luck. Good. We talked about that briefly. And any um, ETA on that, or is that going to be like you know something by the end of the year? Or how do you feel on that? The TV show, I don't know when it's going to come out. They, okay. they haven't. The producers haven't told me about that yet. Um, I'm one of the main characters. I got to start starting those lines as soon as possible. Please do. I'm going to let you go soon. I don't want to be. The, I don't want to be the, the roadblock, the speed hump that's doing this. And then um, also. Uh, yeah, so that's I don't know when that's coming. Shattered is out now. That's with yes. John Malkovich and right. a bunch of other Lily Krug and a bunch of uh, Cameron from uh, from oh my god, the TV show is slipping my head right now. Shameless, I, from Shameless. Yes, I just yeah, because I saw the cast just earlier today and it looked really you know oh, it's uh, great over cast. the top. Um, so yeah, but any ETA on your home on your home studio though is that is that in process right now or? That is in negotiations right now. That's oh, what okay, I'm gotcha. excited about. And that's hopefully I'll have a, an answer for you in a few days. That's um, cool. I, I, yeah. I hope this is not our last time. I'd love to do this again uh, sometime. I, I should send you a photograph of my setup in here. It's pretty insane. Uh, if if you yeah. want to, I feel like I, I'm knowing even more now that we, we could start showing. I'll, I'll show you some pictures of things and it might put a smile on your face. Dan. <laughs> no, um. <laughs> Some people are sexting. We send photos of each other's rigs. It's amazing. I go, look at this camera. Look at this tripod. <laughs> um, and you know, man, people don't know if they don't know. You were born in, in Vietnam, correct? I was, uh, let me let me reset my camera one last time. Give of me course. Second. What was your question? No, you said you, you were born in, in Vietnam, correct? I was born in Saigon, Vietnam. Yeah. And the family evacuated. I was a baby, so I don't remember anything. Uh-huh. I mean, the baby, like the two months old you know yeah and uh yeah and then i mainly grew up in san diego i was in chicago for like four or five years as, as a toddler okay my mainly my life was in san diego before los angeles beautiful because you just had a birthday in january right i think january 25th nice um, i'm an old man now no man 40s i got I, I when you said 47 and especially seeing you in person it, it, especially now i would never ever ever guess that venturino yes but i would never guess you <laughs> Does Venturino know that you're saying this stuff about him? He will once he sees it. This is going to be brutal <laughs> for everybody involved. Uh, He's a good guy, by the way. I love, I love, I, Larry. I love Larry Venturino. Yeah. But, um, but, but you make jokes about like failing math in high school and being aged and stuff like that. Though. What, what were, because a friend of mine wanted me to ask you, what, what were you in high school, uh, college, if there was college, what kind of student was Dad fan? I was a C-plus student, man. Really? I was, I mean, unless it's like weight training or something. And even that in junior high school, I was just – eating oh. junk food all the time. Okay. I was a very, very mediocre student. I couldn't find the motivation. I didn't really have the motivation to do anything until I ran into stand-up in my college years. Okay, so that's one. Okay, so that's when you got in your college years, you kind of just, did you stumble across or how'd you get, how was the process of you saying, you know, I think I want to do stand-up comedy. Yeah, I took a speech class, speech 101, and in that, or they, as they call it, 120, I believe, and then they have something called uh, speech to entertain. A okay. CD. And uh, not STD, not to be confused with those two things, two different things. So there's STD and there's STE, speech to entertain. And I was making people laugh on that. I was, I was like, what is this? I was 21 years old. A buddy of mine invited me to a comedy club. And my friend Robert invited me down there. I went to go watch stand-up with him. I didn't even know what it was. I, I remember yeah. seeing things like that on HBO, like when I was a kid, like little commercials, like George Carlin and all yeah. that stuff. And then I didn't know what it was. So then I saw it at the comedy store in La Jolla and then... I didn't do too well when I tried it, and then I got better and better over time, and yeah. Well, you got, and then you, you I mean, you know, and I, we, we hate to talk about it. I know it, it may or may not be a, a, a happy spot or a great spot, but my God, man, you did great enough to to go on national TV and win a, a, a talent show, for God's sake. <laughs> I mean, that's I, pretty damn, I, I, you know, I mean, you were the last comic stand, you were the first one, inaugural season, you won it. So you, I mean, you did some damn good stuff in your life. 
Yeah, it's it's not a sore spot. It's, I'm very grateful that I won last comic standing. I would do it all over again. Obviously, I don't regret yeah. any of it. I guess in some ways, and once again, I'm not trying to sound ungrateful here. It's kind of like asking like certain Super Bowl like winners, like, hey, what was like winning the Super Bowl? But it's so weird because yeah. millions of people have asked them what was it like to win the Super Bowl. And after a while, I mean, I've seen actors lose their mind doing a scene like 40 times. Oh, yeah. But uh, I've met 11 million people, thankfully. Thank God I was very happy to tour and all that. But uh, no, it was great. Yeah. It was, yeah. Gr- it was great to win Last Comic Standing. I know we're talking about something that happened uh, 20 years ago. 20 years ago? No, that's 18 years ago. Yeah, wow. 18, 19. That, is, that right there blows me away. Because that was uh, soon before one of my many uh, radio firings. So that also brings back great memories for me, Dad. So, um, but listen, all right, first of all, I just want to thank you for taking time. I, mean, I feel like in the last few weeks when you have been in the Tampa Bay area and now getting to do one of your great um, uh, Zoom, uh, you know, uh, what was it, uh, 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 Dad and Friends, uh, one of your Zoom comedy shows I got to be on last Friday. Hopefully uh, you come back uh, one day. Yeah, Can I say something really quick about the Zoom yeah. show? A lot of you guys, I know there's a lot of comedians out there that kind of turn their nose up on Zoom going, oh, man, it's me sitting at a desk. You don't have to sit at a desk. Look at no. me, I'm standing right now. I'm standing in the studio that I shoot it in. Mm-hmm. And I even have some in-studio comedians. And I turn it into a hybrid show where it's part live, part Zoom. And then yeah. eventually I'm going to have a loaded audience in there as well. So it's basically a broadcast live comedy show. So, And, and um, I can attest because uh, what I saw – Prior to the show, right, ten or fifteen minutes when you let us in the Zoom uh, uh, arena, the room, yeah. it was a setup. I took a quick picture and I sent it to my girlfriend. I said, "Look at this!" And I was trying to explain to her all the stuff you had going on with different yeah. hosts and crowd reaction of different comedians, and then you and your studio doing comedy. I go, "Wow, what an undertaking this is!" So no, I really enjoyed it. And I'm going uh, yeah. to show you a photo later yeah. on. Okay, of what what I'm looking at. All right. So that you could see, hang on, give me one second. I'm trying to capture all this. You can right. see what I'm, I'm, I know that's on very Best Buy nerd right now, but there we go. I'll send you that photo later. All right. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You were no, talking about, I, should smile or not. I was just going to be there like this. <laughs> well, you're in the photo. So. Okay, good. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, um, but no, I love it, Matt. I love what you do. And we're going to post all this on our, our YouTube channel. And of course, we're on Spotify, all that good stuff. So we're going to have, uh, all the information real quick. How can people get a hold of that fan on uh, uh, social media? I am at that underscore fan P H A N okay. across all platforms. Same, same handle. So find me uh, on there. You could just Google me. You'll find me on there. I love for you guys to join uh, TikTok's next big thing. So if you guys could join me on there, I, I follow back as many people as I can, unless I think you're a bot. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And ho- hopefully I'll be seeing you on Zoom again. I don't know if you enjoyed that experience or not. Oh, it was my pleasure. No, I did. I did. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. And the time difference being LA to Florida, no big deal. And, and it was just it was just great to be a part of people from Boston, Texas, Hawaii, Chicago, yeah. LA. Yeah. It, it was amazing. So no, I'll definitely do it again. Um, the movie uh Shattered out right now on uh, Netflix. Mm-hmm. That you're in, and then you're working on, is it early, early risers? Early risers filming in, uh, in Vietnam. And one of the guys on there, I got to remember what his name is, but he co-starred with Tom Hanks one-on-one on the hologram for the King. So now I'm almost one, pretty much one degree in separation from Tom Hanks. You are. Exciting to me. I love Tom Hanks. Of course. Yeah. No, but please. That's, I mean, look, look at the, what you're doing. Uh, one degree from Tom Hanks, John Malkovich, uh, I mean, you know, you're, you're with some players. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I'm, just, I'm excited. I love John Malkovich. Yeah. And uh, touring and building my own home studio. Yeah. Very, very excited. I feel very grateful, very blessed for all this stuff. I get to meet comedians like you, who we were introduced by Ginger. Yeah. Ginger Kelly. Ginger yeah. Kelly. Yeah. So we were introduced by her and we're able to hang out in Tampa. I look forward to doing it again. Snappers, great comedy club. Yeah. They loved you. So. Well, man, thank you again. Good luck with everything. Safe travels to Vietnam. I hope that show's killer. I hope you memorize your lines as quickly as possible. You will. Uh, yeah. Folks, go see Shattered and just uh, go get uh, Dad on social media and check out where he's going to be in your city. And I highly recommend you seeing him uh, when he comes to your town at one of your local comedy clubs because the show really is 
it's really damn good and you'll laugh your ass off so um dad i look forward to seeing you again when you get to the Same Tampa here. Bay area if i get out to la i will definitely let you know and, and maybe we can do a little damage out there i'd love to see you pat thank you so much thank dad you. fan thank you so much my friend for being on the comedians on pork podcast as always laugh you deserve it we'll see you next time